Hi everyone, my name is Melody Chin and I'm a research librarian with SMU Libraries. So today I'll be telling you more about Open Educational Resources, or OER for short. So OERs are basically any type of educational materials, so this could be textbook, readings, or quizzes, that are introduced with an open license. So this means that anyone can copy, use, modify, and share them. And this is based on Creative Commons licensing. So this is kind of like a spectrum where you have the least open, so copyright would be somewhere here, all the way up to the most open. And somewhere in the middle, you might have some resources where you can actually download and use, but you cannot change, you cannot modify. So up here is where you have the most flexibility. And this is where OER generally lies. Okay, so OER is based on David Wiley's five R's. So this includes retain. So this means that you can download and use them. You can also reuse. So perhaps you could put it on your website or use it in your classes. You can revise. So this refers to modifying and making changes. So if it's in another language, perhaps you could translate it or actually make edits to it. There is also remix. Okay, so this is if you want to mesh together two or three different resources. And lastly, redistribute. Okay, so with redistribution, you can either share or use it in your classrooms as well with students or other faculty. Okay, so you can see here that there's quite a lot of flexibility with OERs. So as I mentioned earlier, there are different types of OERs, anything ranging from videos, quizzes, even games and full course syllabus as well. But quite a huge chunk of OER is actually textbooks, what we call open textbooks. Okay, so open textbooks first came about because of the textbook problem. Okay, the textbook problem being that textbooks just cost way too much. You might notice these days that they cost a, a few hundred dollars each even. And students are simply not buying these textbooks as well. In fact, a recent survey actually revealed that anywhere from two thirds to three quarters of tertiary students are not purchasing their textbooks. And these can't be good for their learning. So open textbooks actually form part of a solution to this problem. Okay, so if you'd like to adopt an open textbook or even just other types of OERs as well, um, where would you start? Okay, so first you have to find these resources. So there are quite a number of sites that list different resources. Okay, for textbook specific resources, there's Open Textbook Library. And for other types of digital learning objects, there's Merlo, which also has a fair bit. And with these resources, you can actually filter based on subject areas. So for instance, psychology or economics. And if you find one that you intend to use, the next step would be to review. So this is looking at the quality of it. For instance, what institutions these are affiliated with. Okay, and also how long ago they were published as well. You also want to look at how suitable they are for your course. So this is where we look at the course objectives and see how suitable the resource actually is. So for instance, you might find a textbook with good content, but the examples are more for the North American context. Okay, and you might prefer to change it to South, Southeast Asian examples. Okay, and then you can use these resources. Okay, so in many cases, you can actually just share the links directly with students. Otherwise, if it's an e-textbook, you can just download the PDFs and put it directly onto the LMS. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of flexibility with OERs. You can adopt a full textbook or even just pick one or two chapters to use. Okay, so I do hope that you have a better understanding of open educational resources. And 